My guest today is one of Christian music's best known voices, one of the uh, leading talents in the Christian music industry, familiar to most everybody in the Assemblies of God, Guy Penrod. Guy, it's so good to have you with me today. Ken, it's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. Well, you, uh, you were in Springfield and you said you could drop by, and so yeah. I'm glad we're, we got this opportunity to talk to you a little bit. Your life started out as a PK. Uh, Pete Preacher's kid. That's right. Could you talk a little bit about what it was like to be raised uh, in a pra pastor's home, preacher's home? Oh, it was fabulous. I, I had a great childhood experience. I, I love my upbringing. Um, I, I was exposed to a whole lot of fun, you know, as a preacher's kid. We, we traveled a lot, uh, went to different, you know, they called them in the day, fellowship meetings. Mm -hmm. And it was a blast because then, you know, you had the kids of all the other pastors and associates and music ministers uh, there. And, and we kind of did our own thing while the, the preachers got together and told stories and mm -hmm. ate. They ate uh -huh. a lot yeah. and hung out. That hasn't changed. <clears throat> yeah. And, uh, and then I had, I had a solid father, a solid mother that loved the Lord. And they gave their, their hearts to ministry uh, in the various churches that they served. They love people, which I'm very thankful for. I think yeah. that molded me a lot, um, seeing their love for folks, yeah. you know, and ministering to them. Um, it gave me a good perspective as a child uh, that, that there's more, that this mm. is not all there is. And my dad and mom lived their lives to, to see what they could lay up in heaven. You mm -hmm. know, as the word points out, that we we uh, lay treasures up in heaven where rust doesn't destroy and thieves don't break in and steal, mm -hmm. moths don't eat away. Mm -hmm. So I got that perspective as a kid, and uh, found out young that music was a wonderful vehicle for me to communicate. And and you know, I th I don't want to uh, over intellectualize it, but it just it was fun. I enjoyed it yeah. as a kid. I got to stand up, being the PK, I guess at that point was a bit of an advantage. Dad needed someone to sing in his smaller churches and I was the only one that could could sing in the, in the little bunch. There was just six people that when he started his first church. Wow. We, so. we think about PKs doing <laughs> that, you know, and not all of them can sing, but you were one that uh, found you had a real talent for it. Yeah, I, I don't know if it, if it was born out of necessity, you know, or what, but uh, I don't remember the first time I sang. Even my folks showed me pictures, but stood me up in a folding chair, and, mm -hmm. and I sang an old song called Fill My Cup, Lord. Oh, yeah. Have you ever heard that? Oh, no, it well. Very so well. as a little kid, a you know, woman. like the woman at the well I was seeking. I had no idea, you know, what I yeah. was singing. Yeah. But what a beautiful lyric as yeah. I now re powerful song. recall it. So Powerful song. Yeah. You told me before we went on that your father was a soul winner. He was. He was uh, very uh, meticulous about his, his passion for winning souls. He, he realized that life was short and he wanted to talk to people about their eternal state. Yeah. And I remember as a kid going with him uh, on visitation. He would take uh, a map of the city. He went down to the uh, city planner's office, I assume, is where he got that map. And he would grid out the city. He was uh, in the Air Force when he was uh, young in the Korean War. And I don't know if he had that, that military type training that, that served him in that, but he would literally grid out uh, an area of the wow. city and do what they called block work in the day. And we would go and he'd park at one end of the block, walk up every, knock on every door, and wow. I'd be by his side as a little guy and he'd just, whoever answered the door, he'd say, hi, I'm Reverend Joe Penrod. I pastor church just down the street. And we just stopped in today to talk to you about your soul and what you might wow. need in life to wow. be here and be a help to you. Wow. And, and, you know, I, it was just an invaluable training seeing him, you know, in the army of the Lord doing yeah. that kind of work. Yeah and hearing the way he interacted with people and, and uh, yeah. advised and prayed with and cared for. So I'm e ever thankful for that, that beautiful 
upbringing. So many PKs um, don't have fond memories of growing up in the parsonage. It sounds like your upbringing was really positive. It is very positive. As, and as with all you know, humans, we, it's nev never perfect. Uh, so we had challenges and we had our disappointments and failures and yada yada. But, and, and the fishbowl aspect is true. I think, you know, you do have, yeah. you live in a bit of a fishbowl. Mm -hmm. But really, when you apply that to, to the idea of being looked at, we all live in a fishbowl. We all mm -hmm. have influence, uh, you know, a sphere of people that we run with, uh, no matter what your work is or, or your station in life. And people look at your actions all the time. And uh, so th I, I think the analogy breaks down at some point. And I just had a, a dad who and mom who uh, who were grounded, and they they yeah. raised us to understand that that what we do matters, yeah. and when we fail, there's a God with grace and mercy. Every morning, they're new yeah. to uh, strengthen us and to grow us through life. So, uh, good models for me. You eventually went to Liberty University to study music and voice. Yeah. At what point in your life did you feel like singing was going to be a major part of your life and then you made that decision to go to Liberty? You know, it, I didn't ever have a cognitive thought of it being uh, focal in my life, especially as far as making a living. Mm -hmm. I, didn't, I didn't know anything about being able to make a living doing it other than the very few traveling musicians that came through town, living mm -hmm. out in West Texas and New Mexico. With it being so far between places, we didn't get a lot of singing groups that came through. Uh, but we had a, an occasional uh, group or soloist that would come through. And I didn't really ever uh, envision that that's what, how I would, would live my life. Um, I, I excelled in music and was involved uh, from early on in junior high and high school in choirs and you know, little school competitions and such and plays and saw a positive response from it um, and didn't really have much of a plan upon graduation other than trying to figure out where to go to school. I played golf uh, in high school on the mm -hmm. team and was considering going to Texas Tech and trying out and, and going toward golf. Uh, but dad had a, a special speaker in uh, to the church to speak, Jerry Falwell one day on a Sunday, on a special Sunday. And he wanted me to sing prior to uh, the speaker. Uh -huh. And, you know, like a dad, he was, I don't know what, what his motive <laughs> yeah. was. but yeah. So I sang a song. And Dr. Falwell got up right after I sang, and he said, Son, if you want to go to Liberty University, I'm offering you a full scholarship right wow. now. Is that right? For the four years, but you have to tell me before I leave town. <laughs> wow. And <laughs> I, I didn't know what to think about it. You yeah. know, I just... I, I was stunned and sat there and of course when we were done my father came to me and said son you're going to Liberty <laughs> so, okay there's my you decision and uh, and at Liberty I sang on singing teams and traveled with Dr. Falwell extensively wherever he would go he wanted someone to sing a song before he spoke yeah whether it was in front of Congress or a church or wherever it was so yeah. it was you know it was a God plan yeah. I couldn't have have designed it and then Sang my way through college, got out of school, and uh, quickly went into music. Uh, you were a music teacher in I was, high school, was it? And at, at, a, at a Christian school in Atlanta. Uh -huh. I was hired to actually work with the special music at the church. So okay. I, my wife and I moved there, you know, right after being married. Her dad said we had to wait till I had graduated till we got married. So I graduated at 10 a.m. and we got married at 8 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> we did that quick. Right at school, and uh, we moved to Liber or to uh, Atlanta after that. When we got there, uh, the pastor's plans had changed a bit. Of course, we were moved and everything. He said, "Guy, we've had a bit of a change. Um, would you be willing to take the music class at the high school right now for just this year, just to 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 meet a need we have?" And I did. Uh, I wasn't trained as a teacher. But God showed up, and, and we got through the year. <laughs> okay. And I realized, you know, this is not where, where right. I really want to continue. And so we took a step of faith, Angie and I, and moved to Nashville. 
she was an excellent basketball player. She was a full scholarship right? basketball. She was the most recruited athlete in the history of Liberty University at the time, male Is or female. Is that right? Wow. And so she had played basketball at Liberty, and then I, I married her and took her away after her sophomore year. She walked on to the Kennesaw College team and got a full ride. And then when we wow. finished that year in Atlanta, we said, let's try Nashville uh, for music. And she walked onto the Belmont team as well. And she got her full scholarship there and then went on to get her master's at Vandy and grad assisted the women's program at Vandy for a couple of years as she got her master's. Wow. Um, but it seemed like God was opening doors for us to make the move. So we moved to Nashville and he opened doors for me in the studio. You're familiar with the studio setting. and. Uh, I was able to, to sing on records, uh, jingles, television shows, things of that nature, really? behind the glass kind of uh -huh, thing uh -huh. with ideas and uh -huh. loved it with all my heart. Uh, so it just, it's very organic the way, as we look back we see it, we, when we look forward, you know, yeah. we're learning that the lamp unto my feet, light unto my path is more like a coal oil lamp or a lantern, gives us enough light, God says, to take the next step. Yeah. but not way down the road. Yeah. So when you look back, you can see the path, but looking forward, I'm thankful we have to be dependent on God or, Amen. or uh, it doesn't go so well. Amen. So you were actually uh, on your own for quite a while before it was about 1994 that yep. uh, you were recruited for the Gaither Vocal Band. Uh, could you tell us how that came about? How did you make that connection? Well, Bill... Uh, you know, he keeps his finger on the pulse of new musicians. That's been his real gifting, I think, um, in his career, along with songwriting, obviously. And, well, he's multifaceted yeah. at yeah. that. You know, he, right. music is just in him. Um, and so he, he, as he made changes in the vocal band or would add people to their performances, uh, he would call various contacts he had around the country to find out. I'm sure probably someone uh, here he probably called to say, hey, who's rising in your ranks uh -huh. as far as musicians go? Uh, and there was a, a sweet lady that contracted me a lot in the studio by the name of Beverly Darnell, who was uh, a friend of Bill's. He called her at the point they had a change in the vocal band and said, do you have any suggestions for me? I'm making a couple changes and I, I need a voice. And she recommended me highly. And I, he called one day or had his office call, uh, wanted to know if I was interested in, in trying out to sing in their group. I was at, at the time singing uh, vocals on a television show on TNN called Music City Tonight. And we, mm -hmm. we had a blast. It was about an hour and a half variety show every night, live show. We had every country musician that, that sang and performed and, and comedians and so forth. It was a, a lot of fun. And we backed them up with a house band and we would perform their songs with them. And I was very at peace, you know, felt like I was right where God wanted me <clears throat> and wasn't looking for anything. I, I like to tell uh, young kids when they ask, you know, I want to do what you do, how do we do it? Mm -hmm. I tell them, honestly, I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know how you do this. Yeah. I know Bill, uh, I find myself repeating what he said and Gloria more and more, uh, it just wise words. He, he used to tell kids, you know, bloom where you're planted. Mm -hmm. So I would tell him, you know, train your voice, use it in the choirs that you can be in at your church or in your school, sing wherever you get an opportunity. Um, and then God knows your phone number your email address, he could text you, he can send someone to the door to knock on it. That's how he's done with me. He just, he, he opens a door and then we in faith have just kind of stepped through the ones that we've stepped through and he's led us. So that's how that came about. He called, <coughs> we uh, auditioned uh, over a pretty lengthy period of time. He makes decisions slowly, not quickly. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And at one point he said, well, are you interested? And I said, you know, I think so. I think, think I would be. And 14 years later, I 
what were your what were your impressions uh, right at the beginning of uh, when you started traveling with the Gaither Vocal Band? What did you think? Were you in awe, or what, what was uh, what was going through your mind? Well, I I obviously knew who they were. Uh, music, being a musician, a Christian, the Vocal Band was was a big deal. Imperials were a big deal. Mm -hmm. Several groups at the time I listened to. Loved Second Chapter of Acts. Mm -hmm. Loved uh, Rust Half. Loved mm -hmm. all all the the guys at the time and quartets I listened to quartets as well um, so I knew who they were and liked their music uh, didn't really know what to think uh, just knew I had big shoes to fill uh, Michael English had been in the group just prior to me I was friends with Mike in Nashville and a fan as well mm -hmm. his voice was just amazing to me and so I quickly decided you know, I can't try to be Mike, and I can't try to, to do so. So I got to be me, and uh, try to approach music that way. The first concert I sang with a vocal band was in Oakland, California. There were about eight or nine hundred people there, and we loaded in and loaded out product and sound equipment and you know all really? that kind of stuff. Stuff I I had done in college with yeah. a group, yeah. uh, and was cool with it. Just rode along you know and then the videos that he made started to hit and things started to grow yeah. uh, rather quickly and uh, you know it morphed into a 14 bus four or five semis yeah. arenas all around the country yeah. and just you know I just kind of woke up every day in a new world uh, from being in South Africa to Australia to Europe to yeah. Carnegie Hall and Kennedy Center it when I look back it's you can assess better than than I could in the moment and so it it's quite amazing that God an, allowed me to to be a part of something like that yeah, quite yeah. right at, look at those 14 years and give me a highlight or two something that stands out oh gosh there are so so many uh, the, the experiences were were fabulous uh, you know probably the Holy Land trip that we did the videos from Israel uh, in Jerusalem were among the the most impacting on me to go I had never been my father and mother took tours over there uh, but I had never been and to actually walk the streets where you knew Jesus walked and the disciples walked we went out onto the the Sea of Galilee at Tiberias in in a boat that they mm -hmm. say was was replicated after a period boat, and filmed out there saying, uh, "Peace, peace, be still, hear His voice." You know, and for us to to be doing that there, and then be at the Garden Tomb and sing "Because He Lives" with with all oh. of those. Yeah, uh, dear, dear friends uh, that traveled with us, and and video that, uh, and then do a video on the wall, actually of David's citadel yeah. in Jerusalem. It was very surreal, you know, and very uh, important yeah. to me. Yeah. I re I remember buying <coughs> seven. Well, let's see, I bought six actually because at the time I had six sons, so I bought six. Olive Wood New Testament or Bibles at the uh, Garden of Gethsemane. They have a, a little book area there where you can buy things, and wrote in each one for my sons wow. uh, a message to each boy wow. on that trip about yeah. how important and focal that this book is. It's not merely wow. a, a record of events or, you know, like another book. This book will lead you through life, yeah. and so very, very. Uh, impactful time. Mm -hmm. I I don't know that you could you could top that moment, yeah. but Amen. obviously in several f fun places. Yeah. The Kennedy yeah. Center was cool. The Sydney Opera House. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. just great, wild, great. A couple of years ago, you made a decision to uh, go into a solo career to leave the vocal band. Uh, talk about th the process and how it's been going. Oh, it's gone great. I I say I'm not real good at multitasking. I, I have a hard enough time just doing one thing and <laughs> staying focused on it. So at the point uh, I felt that God would have me do a record 
on my own. I had always wanted to. In fact, when we first moved to Nashville, I got a deal with a country label called Polygram at the time to do a country record along these same lines. I wanted to do a faith-based uh, biblical worldview, you know, as far as the content. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I loved country music. Grew up listening yeah. to the voices. I was a fan, that weird kid that ordered records, you know, of Ray Price and Marty mm -hmm. Robbins and uh, I, so I, I loved voices and uh, so I, I went about trying to figure out how to how to get a deal and did with Polygram and about halfway through the record, in fact we had already recorded uh, half the record, the company was bought by Sony and their A&R department in Polygram went away so the guy that that signed me to a deal you know it all just ended just like that you know. Yeah. So again, I felt it was God's direction, so I went back into the studio and just sang, and then the vocal band thing came along. Well, at this point, I decided it's time to try to do this. You know, I'm, one of the impetuses was uh, getting kids at the age where they were now stepping out into the world, making their way. And I'm concerned for our world. I, I, I think I have that similar... Uh, calling that my dad did to see people realize that this is not all there is and yeah. that they're not I, and I quote that St. Francis of Assisi all the time with this quote because I just think it's so powerful that we are not merely human beings who have spiritual experiences but we are spirit beings having a very temporary human experience mm. yeah. and so I wanted to try to, to encapsulate that in music form that could be put into the marketplace and see our world around us affected by the truth of the Word of God. Yeah. I think the Bible's a manual for the human body. Yeah. I think every body ought to come with a Bible, just like your computer comes with a manual or my tractor comes with a manual. And you refer to it to see how you work. So I want to approach a, a record and hopefully a career from that perspective so that we can, we can see impact outside the walls of the church as well because there's so many just lost and and the answers and the 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 things that are lifted up in media and in Hollywood and music and in the world around us they don't lead to good places a lot of times mm -hmm. not all the time but they're old ideas because I, I, I believe we don't battle against flesh and blood, but principalities and powers and rulers of darkness in high places, like the Word tells us. And so there's an old enemy yeah. of mankind. Yeah. Uh, he only reason we're the target is because God loves us, yeah. and He hates God. Yeah. So He says, what will hurt Him the most? Well, go after His kids, His creation. Yeah. So. So he has been at war with us that whole time simply to hurt God. And he, he continues to, to use the same old tactics. Too much of this or too much of that. Uh, you know, trade your wife in, trade your husband in, you'll be happier. Get a bigger house, drive a different car, make more money. And all of those things just, they don't fill the void. Yeah. So I wanted to combat that with truth, not antagonistically, but rather raise up the ways of God in yeah. song form yeah. that can attract folks who, who need Christ and, and they're hurting or they've, they've hit a wall. And most people don't come to, to those places until they have hit their knees yeah. or they've hit a wall and they need. Yeah. And at the point of need, I want to be there with an answer. Yeah. So that, that was really the, the motivating factor to try to, to cast the nets farther yeah. uh, purposefully than the church yeah. to reach into the world as best we could. I have that CD and I think you did it effectively. I mean it's technically a secular CD but it's filled with values and you're not uh, hitting people over the head with the gospel so to speak but, but speaking to people in, uh, in ways that will minister to them. Well that's been our prayer and we've tried to work hard and diligently to do just that and we'll continue to until God changes the, the plan. So yeah. I felt it was important at that point to step back from the vocal band uh, because I didn't want to splinter my energies mm -hmm. and, and 
you know, caused trouble for for Bill as far as scheduling and 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 all see, of the different yeah, aspects yeah. that start to happen yeah. when people are doing this and that and the yeah. other, and you're trying to keep something going. So uh, that was the reason for that decision, yeah. and I've I've just worked hard to do it. I still do the TV shows and the videos mm -hmm. with uh, with the gang. I just can't do two tours. Yeah, the only one I'm in. I got a bunch of kids to get home to. Well, we'll talk about that in a minute, but uh, your latest project is called Hymns. Yeah. And I, uh, <coughs> I saw a quote of yours. You said, I don't sing hymns because they're old. I sing them because they're good. Talk to us a little bit about your latest project. Oh, I, that's, a good, that's a true statement, and I wish I could take credit for it. I think I've heard it somewhere along okay. the way by, by one of the old guys. Um, they persevere, you know, hymns. And... Uh, they speak to the human condition and the challenges in general. It's an interesting day we live. I think we live in a time where uh, man is trying to uh, complicate, it seems, almost everything, and even to the degree that, that y you are unique. And that is true, especially in, in a large sense. You are unique. Um, your, your condition is unique. Your, your uh, problems are unique here and it's very I, I'm sorry but I think it's kind of self-centered even even our diagnoses seem self-centered and self seems to be the 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 prevalent thing to serve these days when it comes to the uniqueness of us all we all face much the same situations you know mm -hmm. so as far as that goes I don't know that I see it all that way um, even sin in the word is the, God boiled it down to three. The lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, Conditions are, are much the same for the human as far as the challenges of what you're going to do, right and wrong, how to live life, right decisions, wrong decisions, as they were in 1890 you know, or yeah. 1650. And so the hymns, because of the enduring message that's within them, you know, I think of It Is Well With My Soul that was written. Mm. This, it's not on this particular record, but, you know. Yeah, that's powerful. Uh, that the loss of family and then yeah. the sorrow, and that's born out of it. Uh, Fanny Crosby wrote out of uh, sorrow, out of need, out of, out of uh, request of God. And a lot of these are the same way. Uh, I, I, I think of one in particular that, that I'm very... Uh, I have to pinch myself to say, did this really happen? Like I said earlier, I was a fan of Voices, and I ordered all the records, Andy Williams, all those guys. And George Beverly Shea was one I, I ordered his records. Yeah. I love to hear his rich baritone yeah. voice. And on this record, I got him to sing a duet with me on Does Jesus Care? Wow. Old him. Wow. In fact, old man. Wow. George is 103 now. Wow. Yeah. And we took a team over there to record oh. the song. You know, does Jesus care when my heart is uh, at pain and too full of, of turmoil to express? You know, when, when I've lost my loved one, when I face a temptation, he sings that in the second verse oh. that, that he, he failed at. Oh. And to hear that pathos come out of a 103-year-old man with a message that, that is, is specific to every generation. Yeah. That's the only unique thing yeah. about it, is that everybody challenge, is challenged by it. Um, and then to hear, oh yes, he cares, I know he cares, his heart is touched with my grief. And on and on, the old rugged cross, uh, leaning on the everlasting arms, what have I to dread, what have I to fear, leaning on the uh, everlasting arms of Christ. Yeah count your blessings, yep. you know, age-old, uh, not only theology, but good psychology. And y you go to a good uh, doctor these days, he'll tell you, look at the good things in life. Uh, and yet, what do we find in our, in our media? Whole networks dedicated to, to expressing or spewing the horrible things going yeah. on all around our world into our living rooms day after day after day yeah. and we wonder why we have such problems with anxiety depression we answer it with pills that have a side effect list that's so long and and usually culminates with this phrase it's amazing to me thoughts of suicide i mean who wants to take the medicine i think i'd rather have the disease than take the medicine yeah. you know 
but we worship the Creator, yeah. so He can heal. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So I wanted to I wanted to to take the old uh, hymns that that have endured and wrap them in country music. Again, I just love country music, and uh, mm -hmm. and put those out there and make sure people understood uh, this is who I am through and through. It's a style to me is like a wrapper on a medication, you know, like uh, an aspirin. Some people take a goodies powder. Some people use one of the old bears aspirin, you know, just mm -hmm. kind of yeah. chalky. Mm -hmm. Some use a gel cap. Well, the point when you take an aspirin is to get the medicine in you, right? So the wrapper just helps it go down. To me, you take the truth, you wrap tr truth in a nice wrapper. Some folks like, you know, uh, contemporary worship. Some people like old hymns. Some people like country music. Some people like rock and roll. Some people like classical. To me, those are the wrappers for what it is you're trying to move down the track or, or take. So, yeah. so the hymns record to me in that way uh, is offered to encourage, to uplift, well. and uh, to sing along with. I put them in keys where people could that's great. Sing you're along with you're gonna have a lot of takers. Yeah, I'm I hope sure so. you're gonna have a lot of takers yeah, on that. I, hope so. I just want to talk to you briefly about your family. Last Father's Day in in our Father's Day edition of the Pentecostal Evangel, we we featured a, a an article by you, A Day in the Life of Guy Penrod. Yeah. And um, one of the things you do with your eight children, you have seven sons and a daughter, I believe. I do. And uh, you homeschool, and actually, this is what brings you to Springfield right yeah. now. You're here for a homeschool basketball tournament for one of your sons. You told me it was going pretty good. It's going great. Yeah, we were amazed. We, we got into uh, the homeschool basketball league there in Nashville uh, a few years back and amazed with the scope. Our kids were able to they've been around crowds most of their life because of what I've done but when you homeschool you know it seems kind of small you're, you there's just your family and then of course you co-op usually with some other folks in the area but for them to come to this event I mean there's over 30,000 folks that gather for this tournament they play at MSU you know their games and they have 30 I think 36 venues gyms going wow. this whole week wow. in fact uh, someone told me it was the largest uh, event that the city of Springfield hosts wow. is for these homeschoolers to no come idea. play basketball. Wow! So yeah, my guys playing on our team. They've done great. They've won their last three. We just you know tournament play. It's yeah. always a yeah. It's up in the air knowing who, who's going to win. But that's why we came. Me and my son, uh, and my 12 year old Levi, and then my 18 year old Logan. Can you just give us a snapshot, uh, just a brief look at what it's like homeschooling eight children and leading the kind of busy life you lead? Oh gosh, you know, I, I would say to anybody that's trying to do it, just, just go for it. That's, that's what you do. You just step out there and go for it. We don't have a, we, our plan is to give God every day and say, oh Lord, help us through it, you know. Uh, We've done a lot of stuff right, I think, according to the word. We've done wrong things, made mistakes. Um, but we think that our kids are, are the most precious uh, gift that we have the privilege of pouring into. And so the way we see it is we, we want to keep them around us as long as we can and influence them with, with the things that we have learned and those that we trust around us that have learned to help pour into our children so that when they they step into the world to make their way they have a foundation uh, because we believe that you make a decision uh, uh, as to how you're going to ch handle the challenges of life or certain temptations or opportunities before you actually are presented with those and mm -hmm. we can do that because mm -hmm. of the word as, as a guide and the Holy Spirit in us to to guide us as we make a call. So if we've already decided, you know, that, that we're going to live upright before God, then that makes a lot of the, the smaller decisions that we have to uh, make as we go through life for us. And so that's, that's at the core of what we want to do with our kids. Uh, you know, of course, there's reading, writing, arithmetic, and history, and all of sure. the things that you, you teach them. We had no idea at the time that my wife uh, would would actually get her education in education that we would even consider homeschooling. We were both public school kids and 
you know, didn't have a concept of it until uh, we started having them. And uh, my wife's wow. sister actually homeschooled, so she challenged Ange to, to look at it. And we just kind of put our toe in the water and stepped off in it. And now we've graduated, well, about to graduate our second through our homeschool. Wow. And it's, it's fabulous. It's not without challenges and hard work. Uh, but I, I highly recommend it just because you can keep them around you as long as you can. And my schedule, wow. it works well with that yeah. too. So. Yeah, terrific. We're loving it. Terrific. Guy, thanks uh, so much for being with us. My pleasure. I um, want to remind you once again that uh, the latest project is called Simply Hymns. Yes. And uh, you should be able to find it pretty, pretty easily. Yep, right. Then go to GuyPenrod.com. Okay. Get it there. You can go to Walmart, to Cracker Barrel, actually, to iTunes, you know, Amazon. Just about anywhere you want to get music, uh, we'll have it there. Great. Terrific. Our guest has been Guy Penrod. Mm -hmm.